Well, welcome back to Oasis Hill Zoo, everyone. Hope you guys are all having the most wonderful of wonderful days. My name is Leaf, and this is my little franchise zoo. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I'm having a lot of fun with this series, and I hope you guys are having the same amount of fun that I put into it. It's just a really fun park that I never thought I would have this much of a blast making. So it's just really awesome just to pop in here with you guys and really make something that, you know, it it's so nice, it's so organically grown. It's just super excellent just to put together. And today's episode will be concerning flamingos, easily one of my favorite animals ever. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to get right into it. So I think what I want to do right off the bat is make a nice little viewing stand. And I think with that being said, we're going to use our free build, which by the way, there is an updated version of free build. I have now included it in both the modding server, well, Kai included it in the modding server, and I made it a little bit more accessible in the Planet Zoo Reddit server, so you could just join that through the Reddit uh, page. Uh, really easy to just join up on there and then you just replace the main.ovl you will need to download the actual free build from nexus uh, but once you do that you're more than happy to kind of pop in to your ovl data folder into the free build folder and replace that but all that being said it's just super easy and if you guys have any questions uh, just join the modding server specifically and anyone can help you out really so we're just gonna pop in here and start to make our flamingo habitat Flamingo habitats are easily some of my favorite things to build because they're so simple, but they're so effective. So one of the things I always love to do is make sure we have a nice kind of rotund uh, shape. Uh, one of my favorite things in the world to do is make these nice little pools kind of like semi-natural. So I will be including like a little bit of sand on one side, but also making it sure, making sure that it is a little bit more concrete than anything else, because that is oftentimes what you get with these flamingo pools. And it's just super important just to be able to, you know, filtrate them, make sure that you can remove any unwanted gunk from them. It's always important just to make sure that your animals are always staying healthy. So making sure that you're able to provide a nice clean pool for them will be important to have. And while this really doesn't hold true in terms of Planet Zoo's realism, like you don't need to make a concrete pool, I always love doing it nonetheless because it's just super simple to do, super fun to do as well. I just really do love it. But making our way throughout here, you can definitely see that I really want to make sure that we give them a nice amount of water. And I really do like it coming against here. I really think that gives it a really cool look. And plus, we could probably imply that there's like windows from the bathroom looking into the flamingo pool. I feel like that would be super fun. But that is about our shape right there. And before we even do anything else, I do want to make sure that we can do some stuff throughout here. So I do want to line this up, and I will be going over this with the null barriers. In fact, I should probably change that all right now, uh, because null barriers, they are easily one of the best things that Planet Zoo has ever added into the game. Uh, these guys are unbreakable, which is excellent for franchise. I have to say that is a wonderful little tip that you guys gave me. Unfortunately, I don't remember who it was, but these guys cost nothing, they are free, and they make sure that your animals will never escape so long as you actually do put in the effort to build for them. And while we have custom fences throughout here, it's super easy just to kind of make that kind of standardized kind of fence. You can see we have a lot of those standardized fences throughout here, which I really love to put together. You can see like all throughout here I have them. And in fact, we're probably going to do that right throughout here. So I'll change these to nearby fences. You think what I'll do, I'll have this section be three, and then we'll place that one right there. And while you see that it does kind of overlap over there, I will sink it down just a smidge so that we don't get any Z fighting. Z fighting is what happens whenever you have two items on top of each other, and well, it doesn't really happen because these are, uh, you know, they're 3D models. Um, it it happens for flat objects and stuff like that and it's always important just to you know account for that kind of stuff and make sure it doesn't get too disgusting looking <laughs> z fighting is like one of the worst things to fight in the game because it, it just can take a really good build and ruin it pretty far and that's not what we want throughout here we want our builds to look good 
And by doing, like, taking into that into account, we can always go the extra mile to ensure that our builds will always be gorgeous. Now, doing this over here, I want to make sure that we cover up that little bit right over there. And now we have the general outline of our habitat. I do want to make sure that we get this on the other side as well. So we'll kind of continue this on just a smidge. I think we'll kind of cut it off right there. Excellent. Um, and I do want this wall to be very nice and snug against the guests. In fact, I think we might be able to do like a custom wall or something like that. Maybe like we can introduce some glass right over there. That might be a little funky. And I will have these be single sections just because I feel like that would be a lot better to have. I'm not sure if this is going to end up as a speed build or not. I'm kind of having a lot of fun just doing this live with you guys, but we will certainly see. Uh, I never really go in with a plan for these episodes. It very much is a spur of the moment kind of thing. And I really do like that. And I like that you guys allow me to do that. You guys don't really expect anything one way or the other. And I can say I really appreciate that. It's just super awesome having a supportive community like you guys. It's just excellent. But there we go. I think that should be fine for those walls right there. And I think I will make them just a smidge bit lower. Uh, and what I'll probably do is something a little bit funky. We're going to continue these walls on throughout here, and we'll actually pull out something that I think is going to be a little bit fun. Uh, so I'm going to separate that right over there, and again, same process as before. Kind of sink it into the wall a little bit, and there we go. So there we go. Uh, that's the kind of baseline of what I want throughout here. And of course, I gotta go in with some gravel. Uh, I'm using the gravel pieces from Nick's Safari Pack. Really super awesome piece, very versatile piece. It really does help to bring out an area super well. And while I do have the Zen Pebbles, and if I look these up, they are included in Planet Zoo Plus. They technically do exist within the game, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can see that their texture really isn't the best. In fact, the gravel texture from the uh, gravel panels or pieces just works so much better. And I really do love it so much more. Just a really awesome piece to begin with. But yeah, I'm going to make a nice little gravel bed throughout here. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. I really think that this will settle out the area a lot better. And it really helps to prevent guests from climbing over fences and stuff like that. Obviously, again, Planet Zoo guests don't really do that, thank God. Um, but it just looks a lot better in the end. And then we can kind of put some stuff like a garden. What's uh, what's some kind of small garden plants that we have in here? I like the African daisies. These guys are really awesome to use. I know they're always like the first item that people kind of gravitate towards because they're found at the first one. But can you really blame them? Plus I think that purple and pinks are really going to stick out too and really help to accentuate the beauty of the flamingos. I don't really know what I'm saying anymore, but I feel like it just makes sense. So kind of continuing this stuff throughout here, I'll even use a few bromeliads. Really nice bright plant, very much like the bird's nest fern. And it really does pair well with it because you get these nice dark greens right next to these bright greens. And it's super awesome just to have. And I think we'll even do something a little bit funky. We'll use the flower beds. I feel like that's going to be a super awesome piece to use. I don't really use them all too much and plus you can always flexi color them if you want. But I think that's going to be settling out to be a nice piece right there. Continuing on our little trend of making sure that this is going to be filtrated. Uh, I want to copy this piece over here. This is the same piece we use for the Asian small clawed otters. And it's the same piece that we're going to be using for our little flamingo friends. And it's going to just settle this area so much better. And we will get rid of this enrichment item. I'm not really the biggest fan of it. In fact, if I could just select that and deselect that. And I'll tell you what, we can move that and then right click it. And doing that will be a super easy way to kind of get rid of it. As long as I can kind of figure out how to. I don't think I can. Can I split it from the group? Perfect. Okay, cool. And then we delete it. Awesome. Knew I'd finally figure out a way to do that. So now I want to use some faux rocks. And because of that, we got to come over here and bring some throughout here. So I 
do want to kind of sink these guys in right here. I always like to use kind of rubbly rocks towards the areas where guests are because it usually deters animals who, you know, aren't really adapted to walking on kind of rocks of that shape in nature uh, away from getting too close to the fence lines. You can use this for pretty much any real animal that doesn't really, you know, mess with these things all too much. I usually use it for big bovines, I use it for like kind of predators sometimes, uh, especially birds and flamingos. It's a super awesome piece, super versatile for that stuff as well. But I do want to continue these throughout some other areas, so I think I will continue that right over here. I think that's going to be a super awesome place to have that, and because of that, I want to see if there's any other faux rocks that we could use throughout here. And using these big chunky rocks is awesome for kind of making these nice big areas where you think that the kind of shoreline will rest, if that makes sense. And then we kind of continue it on. I have random rotation on just to give me a nice organic, very randomized look as I place all of these rocks. And it really turns out super awesome in the end because it really creates this nice dynamic look that, you know, just doing stuff manually just doesn't really achieve, if that makes sense. And I'll even sprinkle in some of these rocks as well. What I love about these faux rocks are the edges. Uh, using these edges to your advantage works extremely well. Even though I'm not really the best builder out there, there are so many other talented builders. Eben, Just Goron, Y Andrews, surprisingly they have a series all by themselves all the three of them and it's just super awesome just to see how they're able to use pieces like this and really achieve something that looks incredible so i really do suggest you guys taking a look at their zoos taking a look at their blueprints and seeing just how they use pieces because seeing how other people use pieces can really help you understand how you can use them to your benefit and even you might be able to inspire other people just like how they inspire me so making our way throughout here, you can see I'm kind of making these nice indications of where I want these areas to be. And after that, I'm going to go in with some other faux rock pieces. These are part of NDP's faux rock pack. And I think if I change out the color to be just about the right shade of orange, we can get one that's kind of like an intermediate between both of these colors. And I think it's going to come out super well just for texturing some builds especially for this when we're working with sand, when we're working with faux rocks, we want to make sure that we are able to account for all this stuff. And I think if we kind of make this area feel a lot more organic with the area around it, it will help sell the vibe a lot more. So we kind of continue this stuff all throughout here. And you can see it makes a nice intermediary in between those, which I think is excellent. Now we do have a lot of other pieces as well. Some of these are my favorites. These are going to be from the Outback Pack. Nick was so smart to kind of coerce me <laughs> into adding some of these pieces and they are exceptional. Obviously there are so many different ways to use them, but I think having these nice little focal points throughout here will be super awesome just for creating these nice dynamic exhibits. And I think it's just going to be super great just to have all of this come into play. So what I will do, I will merge all of these into the same group. And then we can start to build with these a lot better. Once you merge stuff into groups, and by the way, I do have Aquaria Pack. This is just a little bit of a sneak peek as to some of the pieces that will be in there. But back to the basics. Uh, once you start to group stuff better... Uh, it really helps your building process flow a lot more and I have been drafting a script to Kind of building better in planet zoo kind of like how to be a planet zoo pro if you will And I think the script is gonna come out relatively fine um, I'm gonna take a lot more time working on videos of that nature uh, Probably not any more daily videos unless if I'm really feeling it or if we're near like a DLC cycle uh, for the most part I really have been enjoying doing a lot more work on my videos and I hope you guys are totally fine with that because I want to make sure I have some nice quality content out for you guys and I hate the word content by the way I just find it so egregious and I know like oh my god I'm a content creator but still I just want to make sure that you guys have enough videos out there for you guys to enjoy and maybe even learn from so I feel like that's super important just to have right there so I think 
that is pretty much it for a rock work and going back throughout here i do want to make sure that i do have enough of this rubble because it really does help to sell an area a lot more uh, especially in these rocky areas where you wouldn't necessarily have the flamingos walk over uh, always make sure to throw in a few extra pieces of rubble just to kind of gravitate the eye towards those areas as areas where you know the flamingos wouldn't necessarily go but it still helps to bring out an area it really just helps to i don't know sell a vibe a lot more and it just looks super good at the end of it so making our way throughout here just add in all of these, making sure that these nice rocky areas are staying nice and rocky. We still have a lot of plenty of area, a lot of plenty of area, nice. Um, that is not rocky. And what I think I'm going to do right now, believe it or not, is push this back a smidge. I know I said earlier, oh, I wanted this to be, um, you know, I wanted this to be like inside of here. Nah, I want it to be just on the outside of there. We can do our realism later down the line. I don't really want to do any right now. Um, in terms of like backstage and stuff. Also, that is not going away. So I think what I'm going to do is just cover it up. I hate to say it. But yeah, I'm just going to cover that up a smidge. Alright, so now we have this beautiful little habitat. And I think it's time that we'll actually bring in our little feathery flens. Flens. The flamingos. Okay, there we go. Seems like we got some research done for the rhino as well, so that is excellent. And I think the large paddocks, this is pretty much just going to be like a kind of different... We should honestly just call that um, main habitats. I don't know what to call it. I guess work zone 2 would have been fine. Um, secondary habitats... Gabitats. That's awesome. Great work, Leaf. You, you really know how to... S okay. Habitat... Okay, whatever. Just fine. Leave it be. It's fine. I don't really care. Uh, but there we go. We have the start of our habitat, which is excellent. And we're just going to bring in our little donation boxes, too. Because it's always important to have these kind of everywhere. Kind of strewn about. And, yeah, I really do like this. So one of the things I do want to add, however are railings on elevated sections because I do want to make sure that our guests are staying safe up here and sometimes guests will get a little bit freaky when it comes to you know kind of going places where they're not really supposed to go and these usually just help it a lot I do want to see however if there's any other kinds of pieces that we can use uh, that one is part of my path replacement pack I really do like the look of that one but I think I'm going to change that out for something else. The mosaic path, I did change out for this black one. Um, I think that looks kind of fine, but I don't know. I'm not actually, you know what? Yeah, I kind of do like it. It's not really the most perfect thing in the world. I wish it would match a little bit better with the asphalt. And it's kind of like, yeah, I guess I could kind of fix that because I did make this. Uh, but maybe I'll do that later. I still do love those railings, though. I think those came out pretty good. But here we go, and our flamingos are in. Uh, so ideally, I would like to have a whole flock of these guys. I think that'd be a lot better. Uh, just because it would make this area feel a lot more lively. And I think having a nice flock of flamingos would be a lot better in terms of the vibe of the zoo. Especially when it comes to flamingos. These guys are extremely vocal. These guys really do love to, I don't know, just make their calls and stuff like that. Especially in-game. And I just really want to see a lot more of that. So hopefully we can get that going. Uh, hopefully they could start breeding. Hopefully we could get some other animals of this species. I think that would be super awesome to have. Uh, but for the time being, we will simply chug along. And I think what we really need is a lot more rock. So I'm going to try and do that a little bit. Uh, try and figure out where we can kind of place some of that stuff in. Alright, and there we go. There real terrain uh, requirements are taken care of but I do want to make sure that they are enriched so flamingo if I can spell that correctly we should be good and by the way I hope you guys are fine with like my commentary recently because it's just I'm finally getting back into this stuff and it's just it's always a blast trying to find my footing once again and I think what I'll do back here is kind of hide this little water dispenser uh, just make sure that it's not really seeable by guess. Uh, obviously, if you kind of poke your head over this wall right over here, you can see it, but that's not really too much of a big bother. 
But it seems like they're really enjoying their habitat, and that makes me super happy. So let's actually see uh, what they have going on over here. So they need a little bit more hard shelter. That is fine. We can work on that in a little bit. But I do want to make sure that we do have their terrain requirements, so let's go over here. Um, and not terrain requirements, but um, habitat requirements. So what I'm going to do is put in a few cattails towards the edges of the rocks. One of my favorite things to do in Planet Zoo is foliage, of course. I mean, hey, my name is Leaf, after all. But one of the things I always like to do is place the cattails on the edge of the rocks and stuff like that. It's just super awesome just to get that kind of immersion in here. And sometimes the cattails can even grow outside of the water. All they really need to be is near the water. So I always like to place some reeds kind of like that, all kind of strewn throughout. Uh, especially in front of like where the guests are, it always does create these nice kind of dynamic viewing areas. And I just find that incredible to do. But there we go, right over there. I'm not really a big fan of the common reeds. I feel like those are just... I don't know. I use them way too much during the beta, so I don't really want to stick with those all too much. Uh, but what I do want to do is introduce some grassland ones in here as well. Uh, hopefully we get some nice kind of dead plants and kind of like drier plants. So that would be super awesome to have. We can also introduce some other flowers in here as well. And what I mean by flowers is... Oh, do we not have the... Yorkshire fog grass. Okay, it seems like we don't. However, we do have the tupelo trees, which are incredible for making nice shaded areas, which it seems like our little flamingos do require. So we could kind of have that one be right over there. And I would like to get a little bit more shade throughout this section over here. And that should provide them with enough throughout there. I think that's going to be super awesome. The eel grass I always like to use, kind of like a salt marsh. So a lot of the times in the salt marsh you get these like nice beautiful green strands of grass towards the edges of the water and stuff like that. When I lived up in Maine I got a lot of these around the coastline up there and it's just super awesome just to kind of create that effect and I think it would hold true in a habitat kind of like this as well especially with this much water. So I'm going to do that around these nice sections throughout here uh, just making sure that it feels nice vibrant and lush. And since the flamingos don't really mind too much habitat, not, don't, uh, don't really mind too much foliage in their habitat, it actually will settle pretty nicely. And I think this big section over here can benefit greatly from a lot more grass as well. So we're just going to sprinkle that all throughout there. And I think we should be good after we do this little section throughout here. And that should be pretty good. So they now have a nice kind of lush habitat. And I do want to include a few more plants throughout here as well. Uh, the wattle bushes are going to be super awesome for kind of decorating like the edges of this habitat. And you guys may notice I'm not really caring too much about continent and stuff like that. It really doesn't affect the animals all too much. I think at most it really just affects them at 2% of their overall welfare. So it's really nothing to worry about all too much. Uh, of course, if you guys want to worry about that stuff, that is perfectly fine. You guys are free to play the game however you want to play, which is excellent. That's why I always love about Planet Zoo. I don't play the same way as Rudy. I don't play the same way as the lady. I don't play the same way as Eben. But what makes this game great is that you're able to play however you want. And that's just super awesome just to have. So making our way all throughout here and adding some nice periwinkle grass just to help brighten it up a smidge. And I think I can even add a few olive trees just to kind of have this area feel a little bit more drier than anything else, especially over here. I want to make sure that that area feels nice over there. Uh, so I do want to add some bamboo as well. Uh, bamboo is just always super awesome just for kind of highlighting areas and creating shade. You can see that this golden bamboo over here, which is part of the foliage pack, comes out really awesomely. Uh, it's just super great just to have. Uh, when it comes to making nice tropical areas, especially for areas kind of like this. So I think what I'm going to do is include some back here as well. I think this is going to help it really stick out a lot more. And that should be good right there. Yeah, that really helps it just settles, it settles the area so nicely. Uh, what I do want back here too is some mulch. So I'm going to get rid of all of these and select that. And then we can add some mulch throughout here. Adding this mulch and sinking it in just a smidge 
always does help the habitat out so much or even these dead sections in between habitats because your dead sections they don't really need to be dead they can be nice they can be planted in fact that's kind of what i want to do right here uh, we're kind of working right next to our lemurs. I haven't really checked up on these guys in a little bit, but I really haven't heard too many issues from them, so that should be fine. Uh, but let's see what we can add. I think we can add some statues. Uh, and since we do have the safari pack, we do have a lot of animal statues. I don't really like too many of these, though. I think some of the fun ones... <laughs> oh, we've got that's pretty fun right there. Just imagine walking around this corner and you see this giant lion popping out. That'd be super fun to see. Um, but I think, yeah, the flamingo ones are just fine. It's nothing really too crazy. Um, I think if we find sculpture, sculpture, I'm going to find something that's a lot better. I think having the elephants over here would be a lot better. Just to kind of, um, I don't know, highlight the area just a smidge more. I think that really helps settle it a lot better. And what I'll actually do over here is bring these guys over here. Just some nice conservation education boards. Because who says that this dead area doesn't need to be educational? Me. I, sa I said it needs to be educational. So I think we could put these things throughout here. I tried to put some in here throughout like the rest of the zoo. But I kind of forgot how you actually set them up. But I think we kind of figured it out now. So we'll kind of just settle these all throughout with like all whatever we want to add and i think once we actually do get these in here we can start to see that our education will go up so this guy has no power that is quite unfortunate that is quite a sad development in here it was such a shame no power but i think we are looking pretty good for our habitat very happy to see that so i'm just going to do some decoration on the outside help it flow a lot better with the surrounding area and I did move some of the saguaros before, didn't outright delete them, so that is fine. Um, as you guys know from like a few episodes ago, I did find out, thanks to some of our lovely commenters, that it is illegal to chop down a saguaro cactus. So that is something that I never would have known, but thank you guys for letting me know that. If you guys have any other like interesting challenge restrictions, I'm more than happy to hear some out. I think that they're super fun to deal with. I think that they're always so fun just to like learn about and kind of deal with inside of this game. And it's just super great. I just really like that kind of stuff. And I'm adding some of the salt work bushes in here as well to help this area feel a lot more naturalized. And I think if we use some of the dry ones as well, we could help bring a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast to this. And it'll just be super awesome just to integrate. So that is looking pretty good right there. And that is looking mighty fine, if I say so myself. And I think what I'll even do, I'm going to copy these windows from over, from over here. And I'll include these kind of like nice and high up all throughout here. So if I kind of push that guy up a smidge and copy these guys all throughout there, that should be pretty fine. And I really do like that. Look at that go. Look at you. There you are. All right. So that's nice and even. I think that gives us a nice little look over there. I think this still needs something. So I'm going to do... Actually, you know what? Trellis. We need to use these. I don't think I've used these yet. Uh, also, I should probably turn off random rotation. Because that is not something we want to be dealing with when it comes to these pieces. Uh, I want to add a little trellis over here. I think that would be a super awesome thing to add. So we're just going to copy this section over here. And again using blueprints using grouping is one of the best ways where you can extend your skills far beyond what they are right now and i'm still learning stuff with grouping and blueprints it just gets even better the more you practice so i really can't suggest that to you guys enough so making our way throughout here i just want to make sure that we have this be just tall enough and i think that should be good right there so what I want to add is this section going down right here, and I think if we section that off right there, that should be good. So conservation slat, I do want to use these in conjunction with that, so we can kind of tuck these guys in right throughout there, and that should be good. And then we can kind of push that down even more. So hopefully that is looking all good, 
we could even copy that threat there so unfortunately as you guys can see that's not on the axis that we want really simple solution to that is going up to the one individual piece going over there and then just bring it down especially for something very as simple as that and i think what i'll even do is do that same thing right over here and that will just allow us to get a little bit more of a concrete standing right there so while we have that i do want to push it over just a smidge just to make sure it's even and then there we are that is not at the height that i want it so i'm just going to push that up a smidge all right so now we do have these beautiful trellises and i want to use the ivy nothing really too crazy i feel like the ivy would be super awesome just over here maybe we could even sneak some flowers in here haribo style in case if you guys don't know haribo is easily one of the coolest builders out there always does some freaky stuff with his builds um especially when it comes to realism you'll look at his builds and it's like oh my god is that a real picture or is that in planet zoo i genuinely cannot tell uh, and it always is such an awesome inspiration. I really do suggest you guys check out Bro Nation in case if you guys do want to build a lot more realistically. Uh, just super awesome just to get help, assistance, and even advice from some best builders in the community when it comes to all that stuff. So I do want to look up flowers. And oh my god, I just got blood work today and I just rolled my sleeve up onto my, uh, uh, what do you call that, my band-aid? And it just absolutely stung it. So that was quite a little bit of a shock. And I think what might be kind of fun is integrating these little corn flowers in here. So I will put on random rotation, especially when we're working with such small pieces. Uh, and yeah, I think this is going to be really super nice. Uh, so if we tuck those in right there, that is going to be... Well, you can't really tell it all too much, but it really does help it a lot once you're actually nice and up close. Like, look at that. That is gorgeous right there. And plus, it's right in the vets too, which I think is going to be super swanky. But that is our 30 minute mark about, and we have this beautiful, beautiful Greater Flamingo exhibit. I just want to make sure that their shade, oh, okay, we should probably just throw in a shade structure. Um, I think we should have a very nice one by Simply Savannah right over here. So we will integrate this right throughout here. And I do want to edit it a little bit, and this is something I always suggest you guys try out in case if you guys do want to learn how to use blueprints a lot more efficiently. You don't need to use the whole blueprint, you can just use part of it, and that's exactly what I'm doing over here with Savannah's lovely shades, shade structure. Uh, so I'm just going to tuck that in right there, and that's going to be a super awesome way to integrate that right over there. Unfortunately, the LODs, or rather LODs, uh, aren't really the best on these guys, but you know what? That is totally fine. It doesn't really bother us all too much. Uh, what I also like to do for these kind of shade structures is just have it be nice and sectioned off with uh, faux rock or concrete on those little pieces right there, and we can imply that it's being held up inside of that internal structure right over there. So that is good, and I think... Okay, that doesn't really count for hard shelter, but you know what? Their welfare is pretty good. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, guys. So I think we'll just end this with a few more enrichment pieces for them. I think we can tuck a sprinkler up here. I'm not sure if it would actually affect their welfare all too much. Uh, but I think just having a sprinkler up there would be pretty good. And yeah, their toy enrichment is good. What they really need is some more food enrichment. So I think if we tuck a forage pool right around here. I'm not sure if this would actually work or not. It seems like it does. So that's actually quite excellent. So I'm very happy to see that come into play. Um, I will tuck this in right in the middle, right over there, because I feel like that'd be something you would have. Can you change the color on this? Yes, you can. I'm just going to change that to brown so it actually works. Um, but yeah, it seems like now our flamingos are nice and happy. 84%. That is pretty good. And maybe later down the line we can actually work on a real shade structure. Um just to give these guys the welfare boost that they would need. I think I want to have another one right over here too. I think that's going to be super awesome just to see that all come into play. Uh, I want to tuck another faux rock in here and another faux rock right in here. And that should settle our lovely little flamingo habitat. This guy is chucking out our guests right there, so I think that is super fun. Look at him. Look at him. He's so inquisitive. Nice little gentleman. Alright guys, that is where I think we'll call it. We have a beautiful little section over here right now with our Asian small clot otters, which seem to be doing pretty good. And we also have Sari. Hello, Sari. Um, 
And we also have a nice little flamingo habitat right over here. Hopefully these guys get to breed. Hopefully we get a nice lot of baby flamingos. We can see that relatively soon. But I'll tell you what, all, we have a nice 30 minute episode. And I think this should be it. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. You guys are always the best. Uh, be sure to like the video, comment, and maybe even subscribe if you so care to. But all that being said, I'm going to leave you guys there. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all later. Take care, have the most wonderful of wonderful days, and goodbye now.